here for years. Okay. All right. Yeah. We ready? Let's go. You ready? I'm ready. You ready? I'm ready. Okay. Are you ready? Ready? <laughs> Say it three times. I'm ready. Three times a charm. Yes, I'm ready. Right. To love. I don't know. I'm just making this up. Singer. You know, you da, can't, da, can't da, stop da, 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 da. Wrong. Wrong da. show, babe. Because okay. maths ain't got no theme music. So. Right, true. Okay. Oh, well, wait a minute. Do. Yeah. It's, it's all or nothing. <laughs> all right. All right. Welcome back to our channel, to Keste and Jones. I am Living Ishe Reviews, and this is... Lisa, also known as the Alkali Yogi. And... We are back with another review, and today we're going to review Married at First Sight, aka Maps, uh, season 14, mm -hmm. episode. But. Uh, yeah. I forget episode, what episode. But. It's the episode where, like, they That's do stuff. <laughs> day 18 to day 22 but of just, marriage. Just look. Below and above, and you'll know which episode it is. Yeah, yeah, we ain't got to tell y'all again. That's right. All right, so what oh, about the mukbang. Yeah, so it's we do more than just recap, review, and rant over here at right. Meet to Caste and Jones. We also eat. We do eat. And <laughs> well. Eat. All right, today's mukbang is a delicious, healthy salad with a mixture of uh, organic arugula. Organic kale, spinach, Swiss chard. Also, we have organic red potatoes. <laughs> we have organic artichokes, organic orange bell pepper, organic organic uh, grape tomatoes, and organic red onions. Oh, and last but not least, we have also organic cannellini beans. So this is a really hearty Italian salad because again, we have the cannellini beans, carciofi, which is Italian for artichoke. We have uh, patate, which is Italian for potatoes. Patate, potato, <laughs> potato. And dressed in a little bit of balsamic vinegar that's sugar-free from Modena. We also have some organic vir extra virgin olive oil. By the way, if you're getting extra virgin olive oil and it comes from Italia, it does not need to be organic because the farmers there care too much, and a little bit of sea salt. Buon appetito, living Ishe salt reviews. Bay. Buon appetito. Salt bay. <laughs> <Bam>. <laughs> All right, let's get into it. Oh, <laughs> she uh, reminded me, and I'm going to wash it down with, you know, my thing. Some good, nice, fresh, what organic is Organic mango juice. Organic mango juice. Because I'm a coconut. Because he's <laughs> West a, African, I'm East African, Caribbean, so he's always needing to have a juice. I'm East and West. And Caribbean. African. That's and, right. And, I'm and, and, and. Whilst I'm just going to have some alkaline spring water. Boom. Bada bing, bada boom. Got the agua and the hugo. All right, let's get into it because I want to dig into this salad Me as too. much as I want to get into I, this. Uh, I'm hungry. Into this came review. From the gym. Yeah, you did. All right, y'all. Let's do it. Uh, math. So, mm -hmm. um, I you think. Want me to start or you want to go? You go. Well, I'm just gonna say, I re what I noticed about the first uh, beginning. Yeah. Of this episode mm -hmm. is Katina is really trying to be a housewife. She's How trying can she to be a housewife though when she has a full time job. Well, I mean, she's trying to be whatever, as far as she can get with um, Olajuwon and being a housewife. She's making better sh uh, shopping decisions from mm. the last time when he clowned her about get coming back after two hours with bread and water. Or bread and milk. It was one of those two. Uh, it was water. It was? And bread, yeah. Like, she was on this, a prison, prison date. <laughs> so, they start off with all the couples... Um, Planning their dates. They just mm -hmm. having dates. Uh, you want to start with sure. Noi and Steve? Noi and Steve. So, it appears that Steve <laughs> wants to make... Um, no, wrong. Noi wants to make up for things that happened last week for her bad behavior with Steve. So, she planned a cute little excursion in the park where... She left these cute clues 
so that he would go find her eventually. And apparently, he did. Because eventually, on. what happened? Do they have that in Italy? What? Scavenger hunts? What do you call them? Mm. That's what that I'm was. Sure they do. Right, a scavenger hunt. I'm sh yeah, we do. And the name escapes me, so okay. next time. But yeah, <laughs> so it was really cute. Um, you know, it was just something different to do. It looked like it was something that she had planned for like a Saturday morning or something like that. So it was nice, and they seemingly have kissed and made up. Um, so that was knowing Steve for that first scene anyways. Nothing, nothing overly um, content worthy to chat about there. Um, other than I think that probably production asked her to pull something together like this in order to just have content. Because remember, we've lost an entire couple now, right? So they're needing to fill up some of the time. <laughs> After that, we go to... messed up everything. <laughs> okay. Here she we stays go. messing things up. We go to Mark and Lindsay. Mark and Lindsay. Um, Lindsay's still vexed. They're not doing well. <laughs> but how is the salad? Is it doing well? The salad is bomb. Salad is joint. Um, I think so too. I'll keep her around because. <laughs> Just. <laughs> Let's see anyway. what I have to put up with. <laughs> so, Mark cooks for Lindsay. Mm -hmm. And uh, it doesn't look. I don't know what it is. He's he's got a nice big steak. thick old steak and some broccoli and some something green. And uh what she got looks like um gravy and potato. I don't know what it was, but she all, we know, all we know for sure though, sorry to interject, is that it was not very colorful. And it's really <laughs> important, guys. No, not being funny, but as a holistic lifestyle coach and also just an avid foodie who um is passionate about alkaline foods. The more color you have on your plate, the more vitality and electricity you have and you're going to obtain from the food source, which is your fuel, not your entertainment, but from your fuel source. So it's really important to have colors. So when I saw Lindsay's plate, it just looked like brown. The more monotone your plate is, the less alive it is. I'll just say that. And on that note, buon appetito. <laughs> the salad is alive, I'm telling you. I mean, it, you can, you, it's good. <laughs> That's why it's keeping me around. Um, yeah. And, um, apparently, she's still mad about that fight they had at the bowling alley. And, um, <laughs> she's, uh, yeah, she is, uh, talking about his inconsistency and that he's negative and a complainer. And she's no longer going to give him all her love and attention. Like, he got to earn it. And because she keeps saying for the whole season that she's out of his league anyway. So he should be <laughs> lucky. Because um, she, she asked the question, what do you like about me, actually? Did she really say that? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then he says, <laughs> your love is buried inside you. Well, I think I think he buried it. What do you think? Yeah, because, I mean, she was saying that, um, she said it, I'm not, he's not even in my league, something like that. But yeah, what do you, what do you think about their, that little dinner they had? I thought, um, I think for me it's, it was a little bit uncomfortable because I think that Lindsay reminds me a lot of me a while back. Okay. Not now, because obviously you would <laughs> still be here if I was like that today. But it does remind me of how I used to be, which is like um, really pouring my all into things. And then um, I still kind of low-key do that a little bit, but I just don't... Um, expect and return. I'm still working on that. Uh, I wouldn't say that I, wouldn't ex that I don't expect anything in return, but I'm working on it. I'm aware that, um, you know, doing something for the sake of getting something back is not the way to move and navigate. So um, I can absolutely own that that's how I was and that's how, what I'm working to get away from. So having said that, I just think that Lindsay has not maybe come to that realization um, that no one owes you anything and that if you do something, it has to come from a genuine, authentic, and selfless place. Because the universe is the, only, is the only entity that will keep score, not humans. Well put. All right. And next we have... Jasmina and Michael, and they are on a picnic 
And man, this kind of gets, it kind of goes left, like, I don't, they just keep going left, right, left, never center. Well, yeah, with their emotions, they center because <laughs> they don't get together. Um, I don't think he still got the goods. Uh, anyway, he's uh, trying to, he's trying to, uh, what you call it, um, form a bond with Mr. Feeney, the dog. And he gets the dog a bunch of gifts. And they talk about communicating and how ironic that when they're talking about communicating, they get in a fight. <laughs> like, they fight about anything. Because one person takes the other person a different way. Like, their, each other's perception is pretty much the same, I think. And they both get kind of, well, I don't know. I think, now I'm starting to think that Jasmina just, she is really delicate. So, you really have to talk. You really have to walk on eggshells when you talk to her unless you're um just it's either you got to be really really strong or really really weak i don't think you can i don't think you can be like weak in some ways because i think she'll stomp all over you and where do you think mike lives in that <clears throat> space of extremes or on the spectrum rather where do you see mike <laughs> mike is really low down there he's really weak i think he's kind of weak but you can't be too strong with her. Yeah, she's she's um, yeah, that, she's kind of weird to deal with. But you gotta be assertive, but not aggressive with her. Mm. But no, you can't be really assertive because that's what gets. <laughs> I guess your tone. Yeah, she's all about tone. So you'd have to use like a real calm tone with her. You gotta kind of like talk to her in in a uh, way. Like you can put her down, but it nicely, <laughs> in a nice way. No, I won't say that. I don't know. She's just. She would leave me speechless. I'd be like, uh, okay. <laughs> That's all you can say. It's okay. Mm -hmm. Do you think know. that they're similar? Like um, Jasmina's friend said last week. Do you think that they're the same, both stubborn and? Yeah, I think, and, what have and you? The, I think he may be the male version of her a little bit. Um. They just seem like it seemed like they would work good when you put them on when you read about them on like if you wrote everything on paper about them. Mm -hmm. They seem like they might match, but I don't know. It's kind of like bumping heads, you know? Because I don't know. It's just the way he talks to her. Um, she will take it that he's yeah. talking at her. Mm -hmm. I don't know as far as what we see on the camera. That's the thing. But I think she kind of could give him a break. But I think this all stems from that very beginning. Like the very beginning at that um, honeymoon, mm -hmm. day two. Mm -hmm. I think it was just done. Like that just put it a bad taste in her mouth, you know. Mm -hmm. It set a tone. Yeah. Yeah. When um, he was denying an apology, saying that he cut her off. Yeah. Yeah. He yeah. should have let, like, he Especially. can't let stuff go. That's his problem. And also his faulty recollection. Because mm -hmm. he wasn't cut off, unfortunately. Yeah. Fortunately, unfortunately, I don't know. Yeah. So, next we go to Katina and Elijah Mm hmm. They're not doing too good either. <laughs> Elijah Wan, um, his expectations of a house, you know, of a wife. He's wanting a housewife. He's wanting um, the woman to do. What traditionally you see on TV, like I would, I would like if I think if she put on an apron, he would be happy. <laughs> if she put on an apron, wore it around the house, that would kind of get her, get him off her back. Um, she could order pizza from Domino's, <laughs> and that, but if she got that apron on, and she got a duster, he'll be, he'll be happy. Um, you know, he's tit for tat a little bit, you know. I think he takes he takes the initiative and he wants a partner to do the same, you know. That's good. You know, you want balance, you want equal, equal, you know, you want um her to do, you know, like reciprocal. Um, but she's just a different kind of she's a different kind of woman. She's young, she probably didn't grow up with that kind of role. Her mother probably didn't, you know, she probably don't have an example of that growing up. 
and she's thinking, okay, this is modern. We're modern people. We both working. We got no kids. Like, what's the big deal? That's Uber Eats our dinner. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be happy as long as there's dinner. I don't care how you, you like. Like he's the kind of guy that's like, <laughs> no, he's the kind of guy that's like, yo, if you ain't grow those veggies outside, you ain't slaughter that cow, and then put it on the table. I brought the cow home. You got to cut it up. <laughs> I killed the cow. Brought it back. She can't cheat by ordering uh, TJIF Fridays, right? She got to actually make it. I don't know. He's this is a weird kind of thing. Like he, they, he's just young. Uh, yeah. What would you say? His, yeah, it just makes me wonder if that's the household that he grew up in. If maybe his mom was a stay-at-home mom. But I also found it really interesting when you said that you kind of had similar expectations when you were that age. Did you not about a wife? Because mm -hmm. it was he posed the question to Katina. What do you think a wife is like? What is? How do you define a wife? Because he has a very specific definition. Um, <clears throat> yeah. And you said that you could relate with to... Yeah, and you know what's funny? I didn't grow up with that either. Can I just take this out of your eyelash, my love? Carry on. <laughs> just a little fluff. I had to wonder what else is on me. <clears throat> no, just a little fluff. Okay. So, interesting that I used to be that way, or I had the same kind of thoughts when I was young. When I grew up mostly with a single mom, so I think maybe my expectations was to do it right, start with a new generation and do it so called right, like what I saw on TV. Like, okay. you know, I'm a child of the 70s, so I grew up with, you know, watching Leave It to Beaver and all kinds, you know, Brady Bunch, all, you know, all kinds. Of, well, they had a mate. So. Maybe they should just think about getting a maid sometimes. <laughs> but yeah, I just was, I don't know. I was just young, you know. I, I guess, you know, you young, young males, we can be kind of controlling. You know, we want to control everything, you know. So, yeah. What wise words do you have for a large one? Oh, man, ease up. Ease up. Because she is the kind of woman who is of this... She's a millennial, right? She's, she's under even, 30. She's younger than that. She's yeah. That, not, I think she's Generation Z, maybe, after the millennials. See? She is, uh, she's probably, she doesn't have any example of that, you know? Um, he needs to, they need to take it. I mean, he can make, she's trying. You know, she's trying. She says she, she wants to try. Mm -hmm. But he wants it too quick. Um, unless he's scared and trying to look for ways out. I don't know. It's just weird that he's so um, gung ho about her uh, being a housewife and actually cooking. And, you know, he wants it, you know, I do this, you do this, I do this, you know. So if he cooks breakfast in the morning mm -hmm. and she comes home and she orders out, I think he's going he's gonna to have a problem with that because he wants her in the kitchen to actually cook. Right. He's, yeah, he does want a home cooked meal. Yeah, so, I mean, at some point, you got to, like, there's some stuff you can give on, mm. you know. Pick your battles, as they say, you know. That's nothing to battle about if you love the person. Mm -hmm. And if you're two young professionals, you know, especially in that first year of marriage, when you haven't had a chance to even date, given how they came to be a married couple, they've not even dated, right? So... This could also be viewed as a time where it's like, okay, since we're learning each other and dating as husband and wife, if you're great, if you cook, great. If not, though, since I do make breakfast, I'm consistent at it. You could even take the approach of, why don't you, you know, either order in so we can have a date night and no one is stressed and having to cook, prep, shop, or clean up afterwards, and or we could just go out for dinner because they're two young professionals with, you know, disposable income. They don't have children. I don't think they have pets. So it's like, this is your time to date also and get to know each other. You don't necessarily, I think, have to snap into that old married couple role because they've not even had that courtship, period. Yeah, that's going to get old. Like, this this is the time when they ain't married. Mm -hmm. They're supposed to have fun as a couple. You don't go right into domestication. 
that's going to get old real quick mm -hmm. and they're going to be out of it in maybe three or four years. Unless she's used to doing that, mm -hmm. like she could be from a family, a big family where everybody had their roles and, and they had a mom that was always home doing stuff. But she seems like she just grew up with her mom, her and her mom. Like, yeah, this is time you guys just go out, you you party, you get your stuff. You know, you just have a good time as a couple. You we see date. things, go travel. Yeah. yeah, dates. Like, you don't just go. When you do all this domestic stuff, you wait till you got the kids do that. Um, or, you know. Uh, but see, I kind of understand what point he said, too, is she's home all day. Like, she works from home. And he's like, she could be doing some stuff. But um, she is working from home. She is not just at home. There's yeah, a difference. She's, yeah, she's working too. <laughs> and he's like, well, but he's got all these what ifs. And it's like, you don't know until it happens. He's like, well, what if she starts working back, you know, mm -hmm. going downtown and has to catch trains and buses back. And then that's going to be worse because he's going to be like, you late. Where's dinner? <laughs> I've been sitting here waiting for you to cook dinner. <laughs> she's not a cook she you knew that from the beginning mm -hmm. you can do fun stuff like they did they can take courses together yeah. she can get the uh the box kits that mm -hmm. get delivered mm -hmm. to you good idea you know? like the hello freshes the daily harvest all mm -hmm. those yeah yeah he's mm -hmm. gonna lose her that's all i say he's gonna lose her mm -hmm. um, i hope not i think when he really starts to really like her, mm -hmm. she's going to be out. Don't do this to yourself, Olajuwon. You want a wife, but you also need to remember you have not dated her and courted her. This is your time to do that. It's not fair to expect her to go from stranger to full-on housewife when you've not even done your part as a man, which is date her. <clears throat> yeah. I think that this first year... You should really ease up on these expectations. You guys should be having fun, having grown and sexy nights out, nights in, whatever. But it shouldn't be, like he said, so domesticated. It's way too soon for that. And you guys are still in your 20s. I think Elijah is in his 20s too, right? Yeah, he's like 29, I think. Yeah, so you guys are in your 20s. Trust like and believe you'll have. a child compared to me. <laughs> plenty of time to be domesticated. I mean... Even even once you've been married for years and years and years, you still want to date your partner, right? You should always have that desire to go out on dates. Have That's really important. Really important to never stop dating each other no matter how long you've been together. But the two of you have never even dated. So it's weird that, that, that they're wanting, or at least Elijah one is seemingly wanting to skip this whole step. Mm -hmm. Go right to domestication. Right like to they, old married couple on the sofa. Four years old. Yeah, <laughs> right on the sofa. Like, you know, you've, you've not had fun together. She was a, a reported um, club girl. Yeah, but you guys have not done that together. That could even be something that you guys explore because you're young, you're still relatively free in that you're not, you don't have small children or, you know, you don't have a great deal of responsibility. Enjoy your 20s. There's no other decade like it. You will never be this free again. <laughs> until Well, maybe until you're in your 60s and retire. You will not be this free between the ages of 30 and 65. So enjoy. <laughs> and also at that age, men and women, boys and girls, they have a list, a whole bunch of boxes. Check, check. And that's what he's doing. He's like, Mary, check. Um, She's fine. Check. Check. Yeah. <laughs> and she has to cook. Check. She mm -hmm. has to clean. Check. Right. He and she needs to work. <coughs> check. She needs to have a job. Yeah. Granted. Good lord. Yeah. If he's going, if he's willing to support the whole household, mm -hmm. then he really can't say, you know, nothing. Just check. If he wants her to stay home, then he got to be prepared to support the whole household without her working, and then she can do all the, you know, she can learn everything she want to do. That's true. Um, and that's yeah. a fair trade off, I think. If you are happy to assume all the bills. And she can stay at home. And she wants to stay at home. That's a fair trade-off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So. Uh, After Katina and Elijah, who's next? They go back to Mike and Jasmine. But they was just showing us what they was eating. <laughs> Mike. Why is Mike always at the smaller position than she is? He's sitting at the table like a little kid. She's <laughs> up here on the bench. <laughs> on the stool. Like, he just looks like her her uh, junior. 
and she's eating the big old burger. It, she cut it in half. It looks like two big ass burgers. And he's having a salad like we are. <laughs> now, he's, unless he's, he's a vegan, wellness. then that's different. No, he's in health and wellness. That's what it is. Yeah, but I'm saying like mm. the portions, mm. it just looks like a road reversal. Yeah. Because she's eating, <laughs> she's eating all the meat and stuff. A he's not a vegetarian, brother. but it's it's just it just looked funny. Mm -hmm. um, but then uh, we go back to Steve and Noy, and now production has given uh, each couple the questions: Have you ever fall fell in love, and how many times, whatever you know, how that goes. So Steve and Noy are talking about that, and you know what's on Noy's mind? But she just want to know if he loves her, and he ain't trying to say nothing like that. So she asked him, has he been in love? And he says, yeah, a lot of times. And she's like, you ain't never tell me. <laughs> he never told her so that he loved her. She just wants to hear that from him. And then she, she's she been in love less times than him, but he's older. So I guess her question should have been, when do you tell somebody you love them? Because that's all she want to know. So for me... <clears throat> I don't even see why that is a, is a conversation right now. We're circa day 16, 17, 18. Let's not forget, like, these guys know each other, don't even know each other really from a can of paint. It's I, I, I understand that I've never been in that situation, so obviously I'm not going to have, um, I'm not going to be able to uh, explain why there is that need, because I've just personally not experienced it, knowing someone for less than three weeks and expecting and I love you. But I, I get that they're like in this accelerated process. But for somebody that's on the outside that's never experienced that looking in, it looks a little bit premature to me. Well, yeah, and I think <clears throat> I think she actually experienced love at first sight okay, <laughs> instead of marriage fair. at first sight. That's fair. Yeah. And so she she you know she wants it to be mm -hmm. reciprocated. Okay, so now we go back to Elijah and Katina. Can I just say to the viewers, <clears throat> mm -hmm. as per Paul Check, because I'm a licensed practitioner with the Check Institute, and Paul Check is one of my mentors. He says that the representative is um, is there for the at least the first eighteen months. So to want to say I love you to someone that you've known for eighteen days, you are still legitimately dealing with the representative. So. Even though you're living with that person, I think. I mean, yeah. sure, again, the process has been accelerated, <clears throat> meaning um, maybe because it's been accelerated, it's not going to be a full 18 months given the drastic measures that were taking place. But there's probably still a representative at this point, wouldn't you say? Yeah, they need... To some degree. Yeah, their mask hasn't hasn't came off yet. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, back to Elijah and Katina. Um, they asked, you know, she asked... Oh, the question first. And, um... <laughs> and then he's like, you answer. <laughs> yeah, you first. And then she basically says, I want somebody loyal, but patient and understanding. <laughs> so, Subliminal messages. Yeah, she's... She's a good girl, but she is a little... She's young. She's not really quick with it, I don't think. But she's fast in her own way, I think. So, um, she's street fast. Yeah. <clears throat> and but he says that she has no emotions. Like he wants to see her cry. Like he wants her to be all the, I don't know, all the little girly woman. Mm -hmm. um, I think she is. I think she's really feminine. Mm -hmm. But maybe not to him yet. Um, mm -hmm. She says she's close to falling in love, and he <laughs> says love is not on the table until he gets that home cooked meal for 30 days straight <laughs> he didn't say all that but yeah he said love ain't on the table yeah he did say that <clears throat> um and love by the way is not a condition of are you doing for me what i need you to do for me <laughs> he has conditions excuse me right that's conditional love that's a really young and immature kind of love um it's a love that i know very well <laughs> which is why i said that um, Lindsay reminds me a lot of the person that I'm growing away from, like the old version of me, like the, 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 the less mature version of me, because 
Lindsay also kind of does that whole thing where I'm going to give you, give you, give you, give you, give you, make you love me. And then if you don't, I'm going to throw it in, in your face. The only difference between me and Lindsay is that I'm aware of it and I'm working to grow from that. I don't think she's called herself out on that yet. <clears throat> Katina, uh, sorry, Olajuwon, kind of same thing. I love someone who does X, Y, Z for me because I, can, I know I can do X, Y, and Z for them. You either just love somebody or you don't, you know, is really what true love is about. And sometimes maybe you're just, you just have to wait until, excuse me, you're older to experience that, to overstand what that really is. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then we, uh, then they go to Mike. <laughs> oh man, Mike and Jasmina have this question. Um, <clears throat> yeah, Jasmina, see they the same. Jasmina said three times, and she's what thirty, just about thirty. Mm -hmm. Three times. I think she was born in ninety one because she wears nineteen ninety one. Okay, so and she said an impossible hint hint, but Mike didn't catch the hint. I don't think because mm. <laughs> he he told it went over his head because when she asked him, he said he's only been in love once and a possible. But that possible was somebody from high school. <laughs> it's supposed to be an impossible. Maybe it's you, Nick. You know, you maybe you're the second one. He totally missed that opportunity to slam dunk it. He could have been like. <clears throat> I don't think he's close to getting it. <laughs> the cookie jar is still sealed. <laughs> There's a chastity belt on. He got some dry vanilla wafers in that jar. Yeah. <laughs> he needs some moist, like, yep. some moist Duncan Hines. I mean, let's be honest. They're in their preview for next week, she's like, you don't get my vagina wet. Oh, man, I can't wait for next week to hear that live. But we could already see that. You didn't even need to tell us. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and it's because he been, like, I mean, Probably I don't know him. why, but he's just, like, not the man that she needs or... He's not being the man that she wants right now. Um, but he says he wants to be vulnerable with a woman. And she's just like, you're doing this, <laughs> but you're not showing anything. Mm -hmm. I don't have anything to add to that. <laughs> okay, so we go back. Oh, so we get to question Mark and Lindsay, <clears throat> the two people with no upper lips. Um She's been in love a lot. No surprise there. I like I like Lindsay though. For some reason, I really like her. I think she's fun. I think she'd be fun and cool. She'll be. A, I think she would be a fun girlfriend if you just if you was just you know easy going. She she can do you know most of the stuff. But anyway, I that's besides the point. I agree with you. I'd hang out with Lindsay. <clears throat> yeah, I could see how she can also be annoying, but I like Lindsay. Yeah, but you know you got to take that with. With those fun people. Yeah, I don't think the thing with Lindsay is I don't think she's malicious. I think no, she's just... That's just the way she is. She's just annoying, she's overbearing. No, yeah, I don't think she has ulterior motives. Mm -hmm. She's just one of them people that what you see is what you get. Bravo. And this is me. In Italiano, we say, <clears throat> Lei è senza cattiveria. Like, she's without malice. In my eyes. I say, I, I second that. Mm. <laughs> um, she, uh, she likes to... Yeah, she's been in love a lot. He likes pain. He likes suffering. Because <laughs> he don't fall in love until the girl leaves him. And then he wants him. So he likes to chase after it's <laughs> after, after he messes it up. So he likes drama. He likes the drama, I think. Yeah. Um, you know, when, he, you know, so when the guys. girlfriends... <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> That's so uncivilized. <laughs> Okay, so anyway. It's just that he was so good. So good. It's good. <laughs> okay, so yeah, he can't let go. So when they leave, he wants them even more. Mm. Um, so he's he's so in the past, you know, his mind is always in the past. Um, mm. So I don't got nothing else to say about that. This is what you, you is, can talk about this next. Is this the part where they're at the sushi restaurant? No. No? Okay, this no, is, no. Uh, so they have these activities for the um, Oh, this is the love the guys activity. And, yeah. and girls. So they split them up. The oh. girls go to the spa. This is when they usually pair, are they, um, they Yeah, they split, off, up into, they split up into two groups. Genders. So um, I was, to be honest, you know, 
it was a lot of this, and I was just like, so <laughs> I couldn't really. Only thing I caught, salon? I just caught girl talk, and I was like, I don't know. Um, I just remember Jasmina with this face, like when everybody's talking about that thing. Jasmine is like, she was like wishing she has, like, like I wish I had something to talk about. I don't want to hear all y'all good news. Um, and then I, I saw that she thinks, uh, oh, Noi thinks that Steve really loves her, but afraid to say it. Um, I didn't see it. I don't see it. But uh, you, you talk about the girls' uh, spa. <laughs> I'll just say, Katina, well done for being mature. I'm sure that you were um, slightly nudged by production to just make nice with Lindsay for the sake of this particular scene. <laughs> you enjoying that? Uh, I'm glad. And uh, so, you know, it starts off with Noi saying that basically what she's learned is that when you marry someone, you marry their inner child, their trauma, all the rest of that. Frankly, this is the smartest thing I've heard that's come out of Noi's mouth this whole entire season because mm. she's been so preoccupied with when is Steve going to tell me that he loves me that I, I just didn't, I didn't get why there was such um, uh, an urgency there. She was um, really intelligent with that one. Mm -hmm, she was really intelligent, so it showed me something different, um, which is which is a different side of Noi that we've seen thus far, especially given that day two on the honeymoon. She was like, I think I'm already in love with you, and it's like, what? <laughs> do you do you not get that this is all just like a fairy tale right now because you've had a dream wedding that's been paid for with a wedding gown and a ring and makeup and hair and a reception, none of which came out of your pocket. Then you were whisked away on a honeymoon that was all paid for. This is not real life. Nothing about this is real life. You've not seen each other yet day to day what it's like to go through bills and mortgages, sickness, whatever things that come up in life all of the volatility that will come up in life and you're just assuming that because everything has been great for 48 or 72 hours that you're falling in love? What have you seen? So anyways, it was nice to see that she had, um, you know, seemingly grown up a little bit in the past couple of weeks because now we're around day 18, 19 or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other girls all chimed in, including Lindsay. All of them kind of echoed, I think, very similar sentiments, which is, uh, it's tough, you know, because you're having to not only um, get to know somebody who is virtually a stranger to you, but figuring out communication styles, which are very different, right? Communication styles will uh, be impacted by things like culture, where you grew up, your nurture versus your environment. I mean, their, your education level versus your exposure um, in the world. So there are so many things that will play into that. So they all kind of echoed that um, communication was a bit of a struggle. And, uh, you know, trying to meet expectations. Um, Katina especially kind of alluded to the fact that, you know, Olajuwon's expectations are um, kind of absurd compared to everyone. I mean, she didn't allude that they were absurd, but she just said that she, she alluded to the fact that there was a lot of pressure that she was feeling in terms of needing to meet Olajuwon's um, very high standards very early on, which it's hard for any of us to um, be able to explain why he has these standards, given that we don't know much about him. Again, I'm just wondering if he was raised by a stay-at-home mother. Yeah. I'm really curious. I mean, she never throws him under the bus, too. So. No. And you know what? Last week you said the you said that very thing, that he, she's protective of him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes, she I continues she really to be. likes him. And that's the thing is that she's kind of a ride or die. So mm -hmm. I really hope that Elijah One doesn't screw this up because he has a fairy tale in his mind as to what life should look like. Stop fantasizing, date your wife, take her out for dinner, let her take you out for dinner. No one even needs to worry about a home-cooked meal right now. Honestly, you guys are not even anywhere near that. I don't know why this is even a topic for discussion. If you guys could go out on dates and just get to know each other and court each other, then you'll really know if this is a good fit. <laughs> I hope he isn't one of those um, guys who can spot a, uh, a week woman or a vulnerable woman <clears throat> and exploit it you know knowing that they might gravitate towards the guy that's mean to them mm. and he just uses that that asshole excuse me <laughs> which young women is true as young women yeah you know yeah and we're good you know some guys are guilty of that um but we can go to the guys um activity they they're at this cool archer games thing where they like shooting bow and arrows with the Nerf arrows so you don't kill nobody. But 
you know, it looked like it still hurt, but it looks fine because you can get behind these soft bunkers. And uh, so after they play the game and all of them are competitive, that's what, you know, it looked really cool. Um, the guys sit down and they talking and they realize this stuff is harder than they thought it was going to be. This relationship thing, this marriage thing. Elijah Wan thinks that, uh, yeah, he's saying that <clears throat> he don't, he ain't getting the equal effort that he's putting in. Um, he thinks, uh, you know, he doesn't want to teach somebody, you know, he doesn't want to help her. He thinks she should already know it. And that's going to be, you know, that's, that's no good. He wanted to be a coach in the beginning, but now he's like, oh, I shouldn't have to teach you anything, but you, you got to pick one, either coach her or not. Um, and then, um, <clears throat> uh, yeah, I'm saying like, what if, <laughs> Never mind. I already said about, you know, I think he's going to go off if she gets home late, <laughs> she don't have a dinner machine in there cooking. If she's sitting on the couch, he'd be like, rawr, rawr. yeah, where's my food? <laughs> like, rawr, rawr. But, um, so then, you know, we know what, what, uh, what, uh, Mike is going through. Uh, we know it. Mark is going through, and then Steve, you know, he discusses Noodle Gate, you know, the <laughs> this whole thing about the noodles. It's like, man, and she left. Now, that made it worse when she left. I'm just like, man, how could anybody get so pissed off over these? Um, you know, I know it's a cooking thing, and you're not, you know, whatever, but that was the most cliche Asian thing you can do is like, <laughs> Get mad about the noodles. Uh, so anyway, <clears throat> going back to Mark and Lindsay, they're, uh, they're so they go to dinner. And they go to this nice sushi restaurant, and I'm so mad at the way he discarded and disgraced that sushi. Like this dude ain't never been to a restaurant other than a steakhouse and a burger joint. Those chopsticks, he was like, uh, yeah, I mean. <laughs> Like, where did he just go? messed up the whole thing. I was like, man, you make me mad because that sushi's looking good and you desecrating it. <laughs> it doesn't look really good. Like, he's probably only dating women in his own neighborhood, you know? With similar backgrounds. He ain't been nowhere. What did you think about that sushi date? Man, yes, I agree with you. He was mashing up the sushi. It was unfortunate. Also, I don't think he fell in love with it, which makes me sad because sushi is so good <laughs> when it's done right. There's a lot I was of bad sushi. sushi. Huh? I was wanting some sushi. Watching Same that. when I was watching that as well. Because truthfully, truth be told, sushi is one of my absolute favorite meals, foods. Like top, top, literally. However, having said that, I have to be honest, there's more bad sushi than there is great sushi out there mm -hmm. in the world. So we I gotta do rarely... a sushi mukbang. Yeah, well, I won't be making it, but yeah. No, we <laughs> we'll will order, order it. Yeah. All right. Yeah. We'll do it. Um, and look for that guys. We we will, and because I, I trust him because he lived in Japan for nearly two decades, so um, he knows where to spot great sushi. Um, I've had excellent sushi as well in Vancouver. Um, I actually didn't eat sushi when I was in Japan. <laughs> I was too busy trying out everything else. <laughs> well, I got um, curry and noodles. And right, exactly. Else. There's so many other foods as well as so I was enjoying all of that. But I've had great sushi in New York, great sushi um, in Vancouver. So. Um, look forward to having some great sushi in the DMV. Uh, but basically, my whole thing with this is that I just feel bad for people like Mark, who whose world is so small. Like, he's what, in his mid-30s? <clears throat> no, late 30s. Okay. So he, just in the last couple of weeks with Lindsay, he's experienced tacos for the first time. Uh, uh, dolomite leaves. I believe is what they're called for the first time, which are the uh, leaves uh, that wrap grape leaves. The grape leaves that are wrapped uh, that the grape with the grape. with the rice on the inside. They're Mediterranean, yeah. Uh, I think they come from Greece. You're right, but I think most of those Mediterranean countries enjoy them as well. Um, and now sushi. And forgive me if I'm mistaken, but I think when he left, when they went on their honeymoon, that was his first time out of the country, even though Puerto Rico, I should say, outside of the continent of the United States, because Puerto Rico is actually. Part of the U.S., so I just um, it makes me sad when people his age haven't had a chance to go out and explore the world. I actually think this is one of the things that um, is most detrimental to us as humanity. We are so convicted in our um, in our um, 
sort of stereotypes that we have about other cultures and people and countries, <laughs> especially when we have only lived in one country or one continent and have not explored, that's when you become extremely susceptible to the propaganda of every other country in the world is third world, which is not even a politically, politically correct term. Let's go with underdeveloped or, you know, crappy uh, and all the rest of that. And that there's nothing out there. It's, it's so backwards. It's so untrue. It is really, truly propaganda at its finest. Every country, every country has beauty to it, <coughs> period. And every country has resources. So that's all. Okay. That's all I have to say. Good luck, Mark, and I hope you enjoy <laughs> these new experiences that are adding to your life. Oh, man. Some tells me he ain't, but let's go with Mike and Jasmina. She did a home gym routine where she was the trainer, and she's going to train Mike, who is the real trainer, and which was hilarious. But then it took a turn when he got... She asked him to talk about, you know, his brother's death, who just, it was the anniversary. And he really got vulnerable. I mean, crying the whole nine yards and she felt bad. But still wasn't enough to make her, like, want to hold him and, and uh, you know, just like, it wasn't enough. I don't know what, what I don't know what these these people, what they going to do. I can't see them saying yes. I can see him saying yes, but I can't see her saying yes on, uh, you decision know, day. decision day. We shall see. How <clears> about <throat> Mark and Lindsay? Um, they go to, she plans a fun date. They go to the batting cage and they do go-kart racing and they do like water guns and mm. all kinds of stuff. Mm. <clears throat> Going out on those dates, as you should, because you're strangers. <laughs> Get to know <Yeah>. each other. <laughs> um, Steve and Noy, they go to a picnic on a beach. And her wildest dreams come true. The thing that every woman wants to hear when they meet a guy who they really love. He finally says he loves her. Finally. It's only Finally. 18 days, but okay. Eight, yeah, after 18 long days. Oh, the suffrage of it all. <laughs> she suffered so long. Katina and Olajuwon. Mm. Uh, where did they go? To take a cooking course together. What yeah. kind of food was it? Rubbish. Just kidding. <laughs> no. It looked maybe Caribbean? What do you reckon? Yes, Caribbean. Yeah. They learned how to... Make uh, shrimp, so uh, roach of the sea. The coconut shrimp. Coconut shrimp, roach of the sea. <laughs> coconut was, roach of the sea is what they ate. And it was really, you know, deep, deep fried and batter with egg and, you know, sprinkled some coconut on it. They made it and they, the presentation was nice. Though. It the was. The presentation was good. Mm -hmm. um, they had a nice, you know, she learned how to cook salmon, which like he was saying, yeah, she's always talking about she want to learn how to cook salmon. It's really easy. It's really, you just season it, throw it in the oven, 15 minutes, bam. <laughs> okay. Um, so it was a seemingly good date, but at the end, it turned left. Left. To the left, to the left. I, I think you can talk more about the argument. Um, you know, it was more of the same with Elijah one. You know, it's like, are you woman enough? Are you ready enough? Um, are, what are you bringing to the table? I don't have any student loans. I own a home, this, that, and the next, which are all reasons to be very, very proud. Um, but it, this was very hurtful to her. We finally saw her break down and cry. Yeah. Well done, Elijah one. You made her cry. Yeah. That's what he wanted to see, right? Um, yeah, he is, he is too much. Like, I was I was not a fan of his on this episode. Yeah. I was, you know, I was... Though, that was a couple, like, I was rooting for. The most. Not the most, but that's one of them. Yeah. You no, know, it's black love, so... True. You're messing it up, Bo. You're messing or it up. Or black and Irish. So. <laughs> he's black. <laughs> oh, no, he's black. <laughs> I hope. I hope you know yeah. you're black. I mean, Jasmina and Mike, if Mike had a, you take his personality he got now and put a better one in there, oh, they would be a perfect couple. Ooh, Mike and Katina. Mike and Jasmina. 
If you change what about Mike? His personality. Oh, well, I mean, that can be said for everyone. They, they, your personality <laughs> no. is who you are. I'm saying they <laughs> look like I a see. good couple, but, Oh, I you see. Know. Physically, you think yeah. they're attractive. Okay. You got anything to add? No. Looking forward to next week. What would you get? What would you rate this episode? I will give it a seven and a half. Feeling generous. Wow. That's real generous. <laughs> I'm giving it a four. <laughs> four. Okay, guys. Do four, better. Four, four. Yeah. Married at first sight. Do um, better. Yeah, it was. Uh, I don't know how those questions end up in arguments. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, it was. It was too much. Too much argument. So, and I didn't like. I didn't like O's performance. Yeah. A made Katina cry. I'm. I didn't like that. She's a sweet girl. She's just. You know. She needs. She needs. She support. needs more patience and support. Yeah. yeah, she's trying at least. A lot yeah. of other women would have been like, bye. Yeah, because on the confession cam, she's like, I'm really going to try. She could say all kinds of stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. But she always says, I want to try to do this because, you know, he's expecting me to do this. And I want to make him happy, blah, blah, blah. And um, I guess when he sees that and she's gone... <laughs> Do you think they're going to marry? Do you think they're going to... What do you think they're going to say? Let's do a little poll right now. Who okay. do you think uh, is going to stay married on decision day? Go. Noy and Steve. <clears throat> and? That's it. That's it. Right now, the way things are looking today. Yeah. How about you? I think Noy and Steve and... Uh, I'm kind of thinking maybe Mark and... Um, What's the name? Lindsay might stay together because, you know, everybody argues and fights. I don't think their problems are that. I don't know. They can be fixed, you know, with some counseling. Uh, Mark just needs to be either uh, exposed to more stuff or she needs to just let him be him and, and she do her own thing. And she needs to learn to fight fair. Yes. She yeah, really hits the belt. belt. Yeah, and you she can't take that, that stuff back. And now, unfortunately, the whole world knows everything that you said about Mark. On uh, second thought, um, I might Mark might surprise us and say no. Yeah. Because, I know Lindsay's going to say yeah. Because she has said a lot of awful things, and she's <clears throat> humiliated him. Mm -hmm. so, unlike Katina, she has not protected her partner. Right. Because Katina could probably humiliate Olajuwon as well. All the women can, but they choose not to. Yeah. That's when you know you have a ride or die. Jasmina's gloves are off. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. Well, that is it for our review recap. Slash mukbang. Slash mukbang. 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 <laughs> <laughs> you said it like it. <laughs> Sounded like Vietnamese a little bit. Is it? Uh, okay. So that's it for our uh, review. Yeah. And uh, we'll see you guys later next week. And what's our parting words? Get free and stay free. Stay decent, folks. Goodbye. Bye. <laughs> Love it when we just freeze. <laughs>